What is going on, YouTube people? Neo Cards and Comics here for a little PSA value submission service. We have 35 cards, 35 cards going off to PSA for the July promotion. This is $18 a card, and we'll see them who the hell knows when. Uh, probably about four to six months. I forget what the posted date is, but most likely February 2023. We'll see. We'll find out together. Uh, I don't know when you're seeing this video. I am recording this prior to the national. Don't know when it's going to go up. It's probably going to go up after the national. Uh, just kind of one of those timing things with, you know, only so many days in a week uh, and so many videos recorded in national content and whatnot. So, but I wanted to get this recorded because I got to get it shipped out before I leave. I am not dropping this off in person. I did consider it, but... I think I would rather just ship it and be in front of all the orders getting dropped off at the national. That's my thought process. It might not work that way. It might get jumbled in with all the orders from the national. Who the hell knows? But I'm willing to take that chance and ship it off to PSA in good old California. Let's go ahead and run through this because it's a lot of cards. There's a lot of duplicates and there's actually one entire set. So I actually had trouble getting to the 20 card minimum. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, I have the submission is 35 total cards. It's equally split. I have a stack of uh, sports cards here and a stack of Marvel cards here. So once again, let's just go ahead and run through these really quickly. Uh, let me get my piles organized. Ah, sorry about that. I had to fix the lighting. I forgot. I didn't have the didn't have the had the wrong light set up, so we don't get as much glare. Okay. First up, let me just a little zoomy zoom here. Go for a ride. Everyone, hold on. Everyone, hold on. All right. Like I said, we'll move through these pretty quickly. Uh, I'll give a little logic on behind what I'm sending in. So there was a 20 card minimum here I had to meet. I had 17 sports cards and I had three slots left over. I bought a bunch of Bowman Prospect Sapphires and a lot of them just were not in gradable condition in my opinion. Um, you know, it, it is what it is. Just little little minor things that, that maybe hold them back. And I don't know, we'll talk about it. I don't know that everything in here is a PSA 10 candidate. I think there's definitely some nines in here, like 100%, but I just kind of wanted to get them slabbed. Uh, Darius Garland, Optic Purple. As of time of recording, these are going for about 80 bucks, 70 bucks. So my cost basis on this is zero. I got this from Rip and Wax last year and I just never got around to grading it. Uh, and that stuff has been more than paid for itself. So I figured it's worth the risk for the 10 uh, at 18 bucks a pop. If it tens, you know, 3X, depending on what it'll be in the future. It's a little tricky determining values on this stuff. But I figure the Cavs should be pretty spicy this year. And when this comes back, it'll be around like the NBA All-Star break potentially. And decent chance that they're playing pretty well. Maybe his stuff's got a little juice to it. Uh, same story, rinse and repeat. We have a Darius Garland Blue Velocity. And now we're getting into some baseball prospects. Like I said, I talked about this before when I originally bought all this stuff. I bought a bunch of 2022 Sapphire and just regular Bowman Chrome prospects of George Valera and uh, Joneski Noel, which are two Indians prospects. Valera is pretty highly regarded. At time of recording, I believe he is like 35th overall in baseball. Noel is outside the top 100 but he leads the minors in home runs. Uh, he just got promoted to AAA a couple weeks ago and immediately hit five or six home runs. So you're going to see a bunch of their stuff. This is just his base chrome uh, auto. Nothing crazy. Just first Bowman auto. And once again, the, the thought process behind these Bowman chrome prospects are, I'm not looking to sell this stuff till next spring. So it's perfect for this. Go sit at PSA. I don't care. Come back to me right before baseball season hits. Now I can already hear the comments down below. Yeah, right. They're never going to hit that turnaround time. You're going to see those cards in five years. Well, maybe by then he's a three-time all-star and who the hell knows. Uh, next up, we have a Noel Orange Sapphire. This I do not think is going to PSA 10. Uh, I have a feeling this is going to nine. There's some roller marks on the front and one of them goes right through his face. What I've been told is... They're being a little lenient on the roller marks as long as they do not go through, like take away from the card itself, like on the player. Uh, if they're in the cracked ice, they're really hard to see. 
it's basically a print defect. Uh, Sapphire is really, really bad this year, especially on parallels. Keep that in mind. Uh, so I think this one's probably going to nine, but I kind of almost just like throwing that in there is like, oh yeah, here's an automatic nine. Uh, we have three Noel first Bowman autos. Now these are the CSG crackouts. One's a nine, five, one's a nine, one's an eight, five. Now I don't remember which one's which, uh, I could probably figure it out if I really wanted to or cared. I just decided I was sending these no matter what, just because I am curious as to what these are going to end up grading. So we have one of these is an SG or a CSG 9.5. One was a CSG 9 and one was a CSG 8.5. So we'll see how those come back. Uh, that'll be just an interesting little thing to keep an eye on. So that might be three PSA 9s for all I know. It might be two 10s and an 8. Who the heck knows? We'll see. Uh, once again, two Noels. This is Sapphire uh, base autos. So we're going big on old Noel. See what happens. Uh, no idea what these would go for. I put 199 declared value for all these cards. So I think at a PSA 9, these would probably be under that. And once again, I'm going to let them upcharge me. You know, if I hit a PSA 10 on one of those Sapphire autos, I doubt there's going to be any comps on it. So they'll probably let it slide through. And like I've talked about before, when they first announced this, the worst case scenario, probably, unless you just get really crazy, is they're just going to upcharge you to the $30 level. So big deal, you pay an extra 12 bucks. It's not like it's hundreds of thousands of dollars that they're upcharging you on this stuff. Uh, next, we have five Noel base Sapphires. So once again, more Noels and a bunch of base Sapphires of him. Nothing crazy there. And then three Valera base Sapphires. Once again, nothing too crazy there. PSA 9s, I probably break even on these. PSA 10s, uh, I probably make 60, 70 bucks in profit, depending on what these end up going for. I'm going to guess in a PSA 10, this is maybe a $100 to $150 card as of time of recording. Who knows by next year if he gets a bunch of hype to him. Uh, I got these for about 15 bucks raw. So maybe they're $100 in a PSA 10. I don't know. Time will tell on that one. But I can see him getting a little bit trendy, especially if he doesn't get called up. So that was 17 cards. And I was stuck on 17 with no idea what the hell I was going to do for the last three. Uh, I searched high and low. And I had a backup plan in mind if I needed to get to it. And I even went... Uh, the last local card show I went to, like desperately looking for stuff, couldn't find anything uh, that was reasonably priced anyway that I wanted to get and said, okay, we're going to plan B. Plan B, 2015 Marvel Fleer Retro. I have, this is, and I know what you're going to say, well, that's 90 MU. This looks exactly like 90 Mar 1990 Marvel Universe. This is the 18 card insert set from 2015 Fleer Retro. They did these, they put little insert sets in that were throwbacks to older Marvel sets. This is the entire set. I bought this before the PMG craziness. I probably had this for well over a year now. I think I bought this entire set for maybe a hundred bucks shipped goods and services. Uh, the Spider-Man alone now sells for probably a hundred to 150 bucks easily. Uh, the Wolverine and Venom do really well. And a couple other cards out of here do extremely well. That's raw. Uh, I'm talking about PSA tens of these actually sell for quite a bit. A PSA 10 of a Spider-Man as of time of recording is actually probably about a thousand dollar card. So that would be well over the declared value. And I would expect to get dinged on that, except I have a feeling mine is going to nine and in a nine, it's about a $150 card. I'll be honest with you. I did not look these over that close because I want I'm sending the whole set. So I'm essentially going for a set registry here. Uh, I think some of these cards will 10. I think some will nine. There's a possibility. Some of these are going to eight. But at 18 bucks a card, I want them slabbed, and I would like to have the entire set. Now, I debated sending these to whatever CSG, CGC is going to do with Marvel cards. I decided to send this set to PSA. I have another set, not this subset, and it's also 2015 Clear Retro Marvel, but as a throwback to the 1992 Jim Lee X-Men set. Uh, I have that entire set of cards as well. 
I think I'm going to send that one to whatever CSG slash CGC ends up doing with Marvel cards. Because those have that neon bluish, I don't have one laying around here, uh, borders to them. Actually, I have a PSA 10 Magneto. So they're very 90s. It's very Saved by the Bell, uh, the border on these. This is what the heroes look like, uh, or the villains look like. The heroes, it's like a neon bluish, uh, purplish, uh, aqua, marine, all sorts of nonsense going on. The insert set's the same way. A little bit louder, actually, on colors. I think those would look better in CGC slabs. I actually think these look really good in PSA slabs because of the red superhero thing and the white border play off of the PSA label quite nicely. So I'm just sending the whole set basically blindly. I took them out of the penny sleeves and made sure there wasn't fingerprints or anything on them uh, and that they looked relatively okay, that there wasn't like a significant issue on it. I remember when I bought it, the set was pretty clean because I've debated sending these in for grading multiple times before. And I said, ah, there's no hurry. I'll just wait because I don't care how fast this gets back to me. So this is another 18 cards. This is what bumped it up to 35. We'll run through these really quickly. If you've never seen this, I absolutely adore this insert set. There is another insert set version of this from 2013 Fleer Retro that I really, really wanted. And I was trying to track down, trying to track down, and I could not get my hands on it before Marvel cards went crazy. And now that set sells for quite a bit of money. Uh, the entire set is probably well over a thousand dollars, if not more, and it rarely comes up. So is what it is. I don't know that I'll ever get my hands on that one. Uh, there's a couple of these insert sets that I missed out on. So uh, we have Black Panther. Black Widow, and I've just always loved the way this set has looked in particular. You got Loki. Cap. And it's a bunch of iconic characters. Captain Marvel. Magneto. Absolutely great looking Magneto. Really good looking Daredevil. Doctor Strange. Centering is off on a... Some of these, for the most part, it's pretty solid overall. We got a Red Skull with uh, Thor and uh, Cap. And who is that? I don't know who that is there on the right. Almost looks like Havoc, but it's not. Is that supposed to be Iron Man? Looks like Iron Man chest piece, but it doesn't look like his head. So whoever that is, got a Hulk. There's Iron Man there. Really great looking Thanos. Cool photo on that one. There's the Spider-Man. Uh, that's probably the biggest card in the set. Like I said, in a PSA 10, this is well over a thousand bucks. Mine is slightly off center top to bottom. So I don't know how hard they'll hit me on that. Uh, so I could easily see this PSA 9. And that's part of the reason why I sent it in this. Star-Lord. Cool looking Star-Lord. Uh, Ultron. And then we're getting the two of the best looking cards in the set here in a second. Thor. The Wolverine, which I really, really like. Really like the hooked claws. Just a cool look. I don't know who the artist is on this, but it's really good. And then my one of my favorite ones is just this Venom card. I love this Venom card. He just looks so huge. And Spider-Man shattered underneath him, looking up at him all sad-like. And I believe... Uh, I'm a little rusty on this one. For some reason, I feel like the Venom card was extra short printed or a super short print outside the regular 17 cards. I'm sure someone in the comments below can correct me on that. Maybe I'm crazy, uh, but I feel like when I bought this set, the seller had told me that the, it included the short print Venom card. So uh, this is going in as well. So that's the 35 cards. We're going to get these packaged up and out into the mail. So essentially when these come back, this whole pile is most likely for the PC. I mean, who the hell knows between now and February what's gonna change, uh, but this is gonna be for the PC. I'm gonna be holding this aside. This is gonna be about 650, 60 bucks in grading fees and shippings, probably a little bit more than that with shipping out there. And then this stack, pretty much the entire thing will be to sell. Uh, what I do with Valera and Noel prospects will probably de determine or probably depend on exactly where they're at in the MLB pipeline. The Valera should be pretty hot. I don't think he gets called up before the end of the year. Maybe he gets a little September cup of coffee. Uh, I don't know, though. They don't really have room for him. Noel, I could see moving way up prospect lists next year and maybe getting a lot of buzz to him. But I am not a baseball prospect guy, so please, for the love of God, do your own research. 
part of the appeal for those two in particular are they are Indians, which means I could probably move them locally pretty easy. If nothing else, they'll be liquid in my local market, which is part of the reason why I targeted them. And they're also a little trendy on top of it. So it just kind of worked out all around. That's all I have for you, boys and girls. Like I said, recording this pre-national, I'm getting ready to pack to head to the national. Uh, that's already all happened by the time you see this, most likely. We're just going to kind of keep this one in the bag. And whenever I need a video to fill in, that's when this bad boy's going up. Probably right after the national. You're probably looking at this uh, a couple days after the national, most likely when I decide to take a night off from recording uh, and use this to fill in the gap for a little behind the scenes YouTube content creator stuff. That's all I got for you guys and girls. Like, comment, subscribe. Catch you on the next one. Peace.